This is Phil Kopman with a tutorial on integration testing. Integration testing sits partway up the V on the right hand side. The idea of integration testing is after you're done with unit test and the various pieces have been checked out, you then see how the various pieces work together. Integration test traces back to the left hand side of the V where the architectural and high-level design work takes place. In integration testing, several components are tested as a set. Each component has an internal function, which has already been assessed by unit test, but also has communications or the ability to control other components. It's the arrows between components that are the primary emphasis of integration testing. The idea of integration testing is to exercise all the component interfaces and ask questions such as, did the input sequences lead to correct responses? And can all types of data and all types of interactions be handled by the interfaces as they're supposed to, according to the high-level design? Integration testing is intended to make sure that the modules match the high-level design, including especially the sequence diagrams. When you're doing integration testing, the idea is not to redo things that have already been found in unit testing. You assume unit testing has already happened and instead concentrate on the types of things unit testing can't find, which primarily are interaction problems. The anti-patterns for integration testing include skipping straight to system test. Once you're done with the unit test, you could just try and run the system but you can easily miss subtle interaction problems that result in the system almost working and you not knowing that there's some sort of issue that the implementation does not match the intended high-level design because things mostly work and you don't notice the difference. Another anti-pattern is no traceability from integration test to the high-level design. The point of integration test is to compare against the high-level design. A third anti-pattern is that the integration test pass criteria is based on system function, not interfaces. That means if you run an integration test and you ignore all the interactions and just say, yep, sure enough, the system seems to work at the end, that's not an integration test because you're not paying attention to the intermediate results. That's simply a system test and you're not actually doing integration testing. Let's take a look at the types of things that would happen in a very simple integration test. The sequence diagram on the right shows what happens when a coin is put into a vending machine. An integration test tracing to this sequence diagram would, in step one, initialize all the modules. In step two, it would make sure as part of or just after the initialization, each precondition is satisfied so that the sequence diagram can be activated. In step three, the initial action that triggers the cascade of events in the sequence diagram is fed to the system. In this case, a coin is inserted. After that, the integration test consists of monitoring to make sure that the cascade of actions in the sequence diagram actually takes place. The coin in signal is received in four and five. There's a side effect that happens. There may not be a way to observe it, but in number six, the result of that side effect is observable. In the end, the point of the integration test is to exercise a specific sequence diagram. You check that all inputs result in correct outputs. Every component interface is exercised across the whole set of sequence diagrams with all the relevant values, with all the relevant timing and sequencing. If any of the sequence diagrams do not behave as expected, that means the software does not correctly implement the high-level design and you have some sort of integration testing failure. The pass-fail criteria is whether or not the system behaves as the sequence diagrams say the system should behave. For integration testing coverage, the questions you tend to ask are, are all arcs on all sequence diagrams exercised? Are off-nominal behaviors tested? What happens if one of the inputs to a sequence diagram is missing? What happens if one of the preconditions is false? Does the sequence diagram incorrectly trigger? Do you have invalid sequencing? Do you have extraneous outputs? And so on. It's important to realize that the point of an integration test based on a sequence diagram is not simply the end result. 
In this example, there's a sequence diagram that shows a vending machine that takes two coins for a purchase, receiving a third coin and refunding it automatically, going back to two coins inside the machine ready for a purchase. The integration test for this sets up the machine, makes sure that the machine thinks it already has two coins, and then pops in another coin that initiates the test. The remainder of the test is observing the coin in signal arrives, the coin count increases and it thinks it has a third coin. Then it refunds the coin by exercising the coin out actuator and the coin count goes back to two. Simply looking that the final coin out is two is not how you determine pass fail for this integration test. This integration test only succeeds if it notices it has an extra coin and it refunds the extra coin instead of just silently eating it and then goes back to the right number of coins. Only observing the final test output would not tell you whether it actually refunded the coin, which is the whole point of this sequence diagram and this integration test. What this example illustrates is that integration test is not simply a pass on the final output, but rather, did all the arcs appear in the expected sequence? Did all the timings happen as you expected? Did all the side effects happen as you expected? In other words, it is not simply that the pieces manage to work together more or less. It's that they manage to work together exactly as they're supposed to according to the high-level design. In addition to sequence diagrams, it is common for high-level designs to also have some sort of interface description. Many interfaces look like messages one way or another. Here's an example of the OBD2 parameter ID message dictionary which makes automotive operational parameters available via diagnostic port. This is a typical sort of message dictionary in that each message, which might be an actual network message or it might be a data structure in memory that you can access, has a descriptor with a categorical value saying what kind of message is it. Is this the engine speed? Is it the engine coolant temperature? Is it the accelerator pedal position? And so on. Once you know what the enum, what the categorical value is, you can then interpret the associated data in a data structure or fields in a network packet based on what that identifier is. As an example, if the enum says it's an engine speed, then there might be an integer afterwards that is in tens of RPMs or what have you. Integration testing should exercise the message structure. It should test all types of messages, a range of values inside fields, valid and invalid field values, and invalid message types. It should also test the timing and exception handling. What if there's a bad checksum indicating a message should be dropped? What if there's a bad sequence number on a sequence of messages, and so on? The HLD will have this message dictionary, which should define all the message types, formats, and so on, and give you a good basis for writing the integration tests based on the HLD. It's common to see components accompanied by a validation test suite so you can know that all the different types of messages are supported properly. Integration testing best practices revolve around concentrating on the interaction of components. Integration tests should be traced to the high-level design, including exercising all the arcs on every sequence diagram covering every sequence diagram in the high-level design. All the modules, all the network interfaces, all the message types, all the data fields. The idea is, assuming unit testing has found everything unit testing is likely to find, how can you additionally stress the interactions among components to make sure that, sure, the units each do what they want to do, but when you put them together, they actually still satisfy all the aspects of the high-level design. There are two main integration testing pitfalls. First, system testing alone misses system integration edge cases. Sometimes a misbehaving system appears to work just fine, but the internal logic isn't quite right, and there's some specific edge case situation that it will not handle as intended because it was just getting lucky in the common case. Also, it can be difficult to exercise off-nominal sequence diagrams at a system level. There are some tests which are very difficult to reproduce with a physical system or downright dangerous. Integration testing helps you cover 
all the fine grain interactions to make sure not only is the system working, but it's the working the way you thought it was supposed to be working. From a traceability point of view, if you skip the high level design, there's nothing to trace your integration test to, so you're just sort of guessing what things are supposed to do. And if you don't do integration testing, there's no way to really know whether the system is behaving as intended or not.